Well, a massive controversy in the BBC this week because there was a Syrian refugee who was interviewed by the BBC a number of times actually about the plight of asylum seekers. His name is Omar uh, Badreddin. He appeared alongside his brother Mohammed in a 2016 Newsnight feature which followed them on their 11-month journey from Syria to Newcastle as part of a refugee settlement programme. Well, his siblings, along with two, the, the siblings, I should say, Omar and Mohammed, along with two other defendants, were sentenced to a total of 30 and a half years in jail for the rape of a 13-year-old girl between August 2018 and April 2019. Now, the question really has been about the, the fact that they were followed, what the BBC knew, when it knew it. Uh, one MP has called the interview on Newsnight fawning. The BBC was made aware of ongoing criminal proceedings against Omar, who was then aged 18, who was accused of the sexual assault of a 14-year-old girl, a different person. And uh, the corporation has been accused of sitting on information before the allegations were aired. Well, let's talk to Professor Tim Lockhurst about this. He's a former BBC executive. Uh, Tim, you're very welcome to the programme. Thank you for joining us. Yet more controversy on this and some people alleging, certainly in some of the coverage I've seen of this, that the BBC did not do things by the book uh, and that they perhaps were coloured by their judgment on issues of asylum rather than the facts in regard to the allegations against these young men. What is your assessment of this? Well, um, isn't retrospect a wonderful thing? Neither of these young men had been convicted of any of the appalling crimes for which they're now serving jail sentences in 2016. And indeed, the allegations which were brought against them in 2016 were not proven and they were not convicted of those allegations. So at the time that the BBC used these two people in their documentary for Newsnight, they were talking to two young people who were, in law, innocent and not proven guilty. The fact that they have subsequently been proven guilty of appalling crimes will, I'm sure, have raised some concerns in the Newsnight team who might have thought that they've been extremely unfortunate to have used these two as examples of a genuine refugee crisis when, in fact, they turn out both to be sex offenders. That is a that is a pity. But at the time, they were guilty of nothing. They had been convicted of nothing. Tim, there are lots of reasons why people are taken off the air at the BBC. There doesn't need to be the burden of criminal proof. Hugh Edwards, for example, is innocent until proven uh, if there are any criminal charges brought against him, which to my uh, knowledge there have not been so far. But he was taken off air because of the reputational issues and because of his own mental health issues. There have been many other, uh, uh, there have been many other instances of... It's, a, it's uh, an appalling comparison, Peter, um, and absolutely inappropriate. At the time that the BBC made this documentary, they had no reason whatsoever to believe that the they, they had been arrested and they had been or, tim tim they had been, been found not guilty yes okay but there were allegations against them at the time wouldn't you say that actually okay they're not guilty in law but again the burden of criminal proof is not necessarily something that informs editorial decisions the point i'm making about hugh edwards you say is totally inappropriate what i'm saying is that there are lots of reasons not i'm not accusing hugh edwards of anything what i'm saying is there are lots of reasons that people are taken off the bbc or that uh, or that filming is done with someone i used to work for newsnight that filming is done with someone that there are lots of different decisions that are made editorially which are are informed by but not actually to do with the burden of criminal proof Surely if there was any suspicion, especially as the BBC wanted to tell this documentary clearly, uh, wanted to tell this story clearly, and in terms of giving a full, uh, full range of views around this, that they would actually say, hold on a second, maybe there's something here. Maybe these young people, and there are many people who they could have interviewed, are not necessarily the people that should be uh, interviewed by Newsnight and broadcast in this regard. Peter, you're attributing malice to a decision which was just unfortunate. How do you know Neither that? Of these young gentlemen had, at that stage, been convicted of any offence. Hundreds of thousands of refugees were fleeing the appalling regime in which President Assad has murdered 
literally hundreds of thousands. Of Why not interview some other people um, who were fleeing that? Why not interview people who hadn't been I'm involved sure that in retrospect, the BBC would wish it had. But at the time, these people were not guilty of any criminal offence, and the BBC was telling a story about asylum seekers. I'm sure that those who produced the programme would think in retrospect, OK, that was unfortunate. We clearly chose the wrong people in choosing, choosing Omar and Mohammed Bedreddin. I would say the same thing. But I could not possibly have known in 2016 that these people would be convicted several years later of appalling sexual offences. The BBC did not have that information. It did not know. It could not have known. And this is just another classic example of the way that commercial broadcasters, which are doing a tremendous job for their own viewers and listeners, seem to want to use anything they can to beat the BBC. Look, Talk TV is doing a great job for its viewers and listeners. The BBC does an equally good job for its licensed payers. For goodness sake, get over it. If the sort of stories that were published in numerous newspapers on, on other broadcasters were scrutinised with the way that every step the BBC takes is scrutinised, I don't think they would come out smelling of roses either. This is just an appalling attempt to knock BBC journalists for covering a story about two young people who at the time were not convicted of any offence. They have been subsequently, in retrospect, they themselves will regret it, but at the time they did not know. Would you accept it was bad editorial judgment given that they had at least been accused of something? No, I will not accept that it was bad editorial judgment because people are innocent until proven guilty and there is absolutely no basis for that allegation. The BBC will look back and think, oh well, yes, that's a shame. But sometimes that happens. We write about people in one context and we subsequently discover that there is something else which ought at, in retrospect, perhaps to have been something we would have liked to know about. But given that the BBC did not know that they would subsequently be committed of offences, which at that point, from the look of the dime line, they hadn't even committed, I really think it's quite ridiculous to suggest that the BBC should be apologising for showing people... I haven't suggested that. I haven't suggested that. I haven't suggested that, Tim. Uh, listen, thank you for your thoughts. I don't think we're going to agree, but I appreciate you coming on. That's Professor Tim Lockhurst. Thank you for your thoughts there. Former BBC executive Amanda has been in touch and says, Hi, Peter, I'm afraid the BBC has got to the point where they crave controversy. They feel they have free reign to say as they please, and it's two fingers to the licence fee pair. We need them pulling down a peg or two. Edward says, with regard to this uh, country supported by the likes of the BBC opening its doors to the Syrians, infuriates me. Why the hell don't these people show us some respect? As soon as they have completed their sentences, they must be deported regardless of any ECHR demands, says Edward.